Okay, so if recently you've been listening to the latest Mino album Love for Rent or Forever Story by G.I.D., I'm pretty sure you would agree with me on the fact that those two albums probably has some of the hardest beats we've heard in a minute. Okay, shit. Just see my very favorite bitch inside my very favorite CD. It was very cheeky. Trying to find a way to like, not overstep. But it's really just me, I'm... And besides tons of other stuff, the production on these albums is packed with glitchy experimental melodies, hard-hitting drums, diverse and groovy hi-hat patterns, and of course, 808s that slaps. And a lot of that has to do with this young man right here. I'm sure at this point he does not require any introduction, but nevertheless... Hey, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from motherfucking A, hey, where you say you from, boy? He don't talk, but look, he got them glasses on, okay? Monty Booker is a 27-year-old American producer from Chicago. Started producing in 2011 and soon after he would start to post his early creations on SoundCloud where he would also grow an impressive following count because of his unique production style, which was a fusion of trap music, jazz, neo-soul, sprinkled with organic textures and glitchy melodies. Fast forward to 2013, Monty is getting introduced with St. Louis artist Mino and as we all know that would turn into a long time collaboration and friendship between the two. Around the same time, he also became a member of Selection Records and released an EP in 2015 as part of their White Label series. The record Colors with Smino would become a viral hit in 2020 from TikTok streams, entering Spotify viral top 50. In 2019, Booker was invited to Dreamville's recording sessions for the compilation Revenge of Dreamers Part 3 by J. Cole. That would lead him to co-producing several records on the project. And guess what happened? The album was nominated for the best rap album at the 2020 Grammy Awards, yeah. Apart from Smino and J. Cole throughout his career, Monty has been working with artists like Ari Lennox, Mick Jenkins, Jid, Saba and more. So I guess the real question is, what is it that makes Monty's beats so great and so special? Well, listening to the albums that I've mentioned before, I feel like we can define Monty's sound based on a few things. I would say that to me the signature Monty sound is consisting of glitchy experimental melodies, sine wave synths, hard hitting offbeat drums and obviously 808s that slap the shit out of you. Obviously, I tried to keep all of that in mind as I was producing my Monty type beat in order to achieve results that are as similar as possible. And in fact, I've made two beats for this video, but I chose to break down the second beat that I made just because I felt like it sounds more like Monty type beat in my opinion. And by the way, I want to give away a few copies of Monty Booker Sounds Chapter 2 at the end of the video. So stick around to find out how you can get a copy of your own. And I know this is the moment you've been waiting for and I'm thankful that you're still here. So let's dive into the Ableton Live and let's get to the production breakdown, shall we? So the beat is really not that complicated, it's fairly simple to be honest. I've started with this sample that I found in one of my sample packs that I have. The name of the sample pack is Warped Frequencies, it's from Sample Phonics. They make really really dope sample packs, go check them out. So the original sample that I found, it sounds like this. So I kind of heard the sample and it really gave me a Monty vibe right away so I kind of sticked with it. All I did for the processing of the sample is I've added the Ableton stock EQ just to kind of high pass and low pass the sample and just to kind of keep the mid frequencies of the sample present okay. And also I chopped up the sample, I just kept the very beginning of the sample and I made it repeat itself and now it would sound like this. So I really like the way it sounded, but I just felt like it's a bit plain and it keeps repeating itself all the time, you know? So I kept it the way it was for the first 8 bars and for the second 8 bars I kept it the same way, I just pitched it up 5 semitones. And then the sample would sound like this. So, so far so good and chopped up sample sounds pretty cool, but I still felt like it's a bit plain, so I decided to add the reverse plugin on the sample, the name of the plugin is Screw, it has some pretty cool presets that kind of makes your sample go in reverse but like in a different ways, and I just applied one of the presets from reverse plugin in order to record our main sample but in reverse, you know, just to kind of back it up with the main sample, just to kind of make the sample sound a bit more interesting. The reverse sample sounds like this on its own.
And for the processing, all I'm using again is Ableton Stock EQ, again to do the same thing, to low pass and high pass the sample, to kind of give the space for the drums after to shine through. That's kind of the main idea as to why I'm constantly high passing and low passing the samples. It's just to kind of open some space for the drums and bass to shine through after. And also for the reverse layer of the sample, I'm using sidechain compressor from Ableton, it's the stock compressor. And I really like the way it sounds with the sidechain because it gives the sample this kind of pulsing feeling. I don't know if you understand what I mean, but it's almost rhythmical, you know, and it sounds very interesting. That's why I do it. Moving on, I've added some keys from Native Instruments Reactor 6, and the Reactor library is called Carbon 2. I'm not exactly sure, I just don't remember, but I think it's a free plugin and it's a free sound library. What I am sure about, though, is that Monty is actually using a lot of this specific plugin with this specific sound library. I've been watching his Twitch streams and he's been using this synth a lot, so I tried to kind of use this one on purpose to get the sound that sounds as similar as possible to the sounds that Monty is using. So what I did with the keys is I've bounced them into the audio just to save CPU like this I can disable the plugins because they are CPU heavy. For the processing again all Ableton stock plugins, again the EQ just to kind of high pass and low pass, glue compressor which is an add sustain preset, it just kind of evens out the peaks of the sound a little bit, makes everything a bit softer and then I have again the sidechain compressor doing the same thing that he's doing for the reverse pad just to kind of achieve that ducking pulsing effect okay. And the processed version of the keys would sound like this. And that's pretty much it for the melodic stuff. Coming up next we have 808, which is Monty Booker 808 from Monty Booker Sounds Chapter 2. It's a sample. It's called the RG808. As I told you before, I will be giving away a few copies of Monty Booker Sounds Chapter 2 at the end of the video, so stick around to find out how you can win a copy. And to be honest, almost all of the sounds are coming from Monty Booker Pack. Like this, obviously, I can recreate the sound with his own identical sounds that he is using in the production. 808 is playing the root notes of the chords as pretty much always with my beats and the 808 pattern would sound like this on its own. Yeah, really cool hard hitting 808 and to be honest I didn't do too much for the processing, all I did is pretty much I've added this kick tight preset from Ableton which I've explained so many times already in my other production videos but this is basically like the compressor that really brings out the low end of the bass and I love the way it sounds, it just makes things sound thicker. After I've just added the saturator from Fab Filter, which is called Saturn 2 and then we just have Ableton stock EQ again just to high pass the 808. So all I had to do at this point is just to add some drums. Let me play you a full drum loop like this. You kind of get the sense of how everything sounds together. And then I will just break it down for you guys like layer by layer. Okay. And there you go, pretty hard hitting, signature Monty style offbeat drums I would say. Uh, so first things first, I really wanted to have like a hard hitting, almost like super distorted kick drum, which I found in Monty Booker sample pack, it's called Sky Kick. Kick drum is playing a really basic pattern and it sounds like this on its own. And as you can tell from the processing chain, I did absolutely nothing for the kick drum because it sounded perfect the way it was, so I just moved on. After I've added another kick drum, and if you listen to Monty's beats, you will hear that he does this technique a lot. He's just kind of taking the kick drums and he's pitching the kick drums up and then he's using them like uh, percussive sounds and it would sound like this. And for the processing of the high pitch kicked, I've just added a little bit of overdrive from Ableton. Uh, moving on, we have the snare drum, which is a really short and crisp snare that I found again in Monty Booker sounds. And again, I didn't do anything to process the snare drum at all. So after I've added the hi-hat, and if you guys know, the hi-hats are really kind of playing important role in Monty drums because those are very kind of off the grid all the time. And just kind of by hearing the hi-hat in a beat, you can recognize that this is a Monty beat because hi-hat is always off the grid and it's kind of really swingy and all that. So I tried to achieve the same result. <laughs> 
hi-hat is basically playing the 16th note rhythm all i did with this hi-hat is i just kind of moved it off the grid a little bit so it would be like this normally this is on the grid and then i kind of just moved it a bit forward so now it's coming in a bit late and it has this offbeat feel to it and another thing i did is that i've added this ableton's jazz swing preset from the ableton groove pool it's a bit complicated but it's basically like a pre-programmed pattern that like if you drop on a certain pattern it will swing a certain way okay ableton made a whole collection of these different swings and grooves and if you apply them to certain pattern your pattern will basically overtake this swing that you kind of applying so let me just quickly show you the difference with and without the swing preset okay Uh, so yeah, as you could probably tell, the difference is really, really noticeable. That's why I really like these Ableton Groove Pools. They are amazing if you kind of want to get your drums to sound more human. You know, you can just apply one of those swings and they sound really, really organic and good. And I love them. After I've added another hi-hat, which is just playing this basic two-step rhythm. And all I did for this hi-hat, I just kind of panned it a little bit to the right like this. They are not all in the center, you know, so one hi-hat is in the center, one is in the right, one is on the left. Because I kind of tend to keep my primary rhythmical elements in the center, like kick, snare, and maybe a main hi-hat pattern. And everything else I'm kind of panning around to the left and to the right. This way you can kind of get a cleaner mix as well because the things are not all in the center. After I've added some hi-hat rolls, I didn't really have to do it because at this point the drum pattern was sounding really good already to me. But just just kind of to make things a bit more interesting I decided to and all the drum sounds that I've showed you so far are obviously from Monty Booker Kit chapter 2 except these three last sounds which is the shaker laser percussion and shaker 2 uh, those I took from decap sample packs if you're wondering okay so the next sound in the drum pattern that I'm adding is this double shaker it sounds like this Uh, then as I told you before we have this laser percussion sound from decap because it's not a Monty beat if there is no laser sounds <laughs> I'm pretty sure you know that at this point So we just have two more sounds left which is a shaker and this weird vox and the vox sound is coming from Monty Booker kit number one Okay, and all together sounds like this And there you go, those are all the drum sounds that I've used and that's pretty much the beat to be honest. I barely did any processing for the drums. I think all over for the drums I've just used the Ableton stock EQ just to kind of get rid of the certain frequencies that I don't want to hear in a mix, okay? So yeah, let me just play a full beat for you guys one time and we are good to go. And there you go people, I hope you've learned something new from this video and even if you didn't, I hope you had a good time watching. And as you could probably tell if you watched the whole video, I'm trying out this kind of new documentary slash tutorial production format videos. I would love to know what you guys think about these videos in the comment section down below. In fact, I want to give away a couple copies of Monty Booker Sounds Chapter 2 for some of you guys who's gonna leave the most valuable feedback comment in order for me to improve this type of content style. and also you guys can leave some recommendations for the next artist I should cover with the same kind of documentary slash tutorial style video format. I will just choose randomly a few comments and I will reach out to you guys and I will send over the copy of Monty Booker Sounds Chapter 2 for those of you who's gonna leave the most valuable comments in my opinion. I think it's fair. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Almost Famous. Thank you for coming through. I'm signing out. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.